night time for another episode of thrifty business i'm your one host vegas j and as you can see i'm missing a co-host so here's what's happening weird got the pre-show going talking to michelle my co-host talking to barbara i walk away to make my cocktail come back michelle we cannot hear her anymore she clicked nothing touched nothing we've tried to reboot a few times ain't working so she's gonna try and work it off her ipad so she'll be back in a quick second hopefully I don't know. I've never had that happen before. So what we'll do in the meantime to get the show rolling is we'll go right to. Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week I drink, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug and try and match it up with my guest or my co-host. I had a stretch a little bit tonight for Barbara, but I, I figured it out. So uh, my my guest tonight is Barbara Boschen. How are you, Barbara? I'm fine. How are you? Good. So what lovely state do you live in? Jersey. So I actually have a tiki mug from Jersey that I was going to drink out oh, of. Nice. However, the guys installing a window in my house were not nice to my tiki mug. Hmm. So it's here in honor of your state. <laughs> <laughs> but but I figured out a, a good alternative. This is from a, a tiki mug from a magazine called Bachelor Pad, but they're just a B in the hat. So, hey for Barbara. Very good. So there we go. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Hey, hey we hear you. Beautiful. All right, cool. Awesome. And then the rum is where I had a stretch. Now you live in Jersey. Jersey's on the Atlantic Ocean. So I'm drinking Atlantico tonight. Very good. I think you did your job. Yep. So as a little just uh, added tip, this is from the Geisha Room. It was in the Hawaiian Cottage in Mercantile, Mer Merchantville, mm -hmm. New Jersey. So if you find stuff from the Geisha Room, it's this or a parrot usually. And they're worth like 25, 30, 40 bucks. So uh, yes. not in this condition, but in solid condition. So keep your eyes peeled. And Atlantico is a very yummy uh, Dominican Republic rum. So, all right. So Barbara's going to be back. We're going to talk about Jet and Walmart and uh, her daddy's flea market in about 25 minutes. So we're going we're gonna to say uh, enjoy the show and we'll see you in a little bit. All righty. Let's get right to it, shall we? Time for our scores of the week, where Michelle and I will be sharing with you the cool things that we sold this week. Typically, they're bolos. Be on the lookout. Things you should be hunting for to be selling on eBay or Jet or Walmart or Amazon. Boop, boop. Boop. <laughs> All right. You're up first with uh, Bird Builder Punch, whatever that is. Oh, okay. So that is... Um... So you'll see two listings there. I went to an estate sale and I found some items called Stampin' Up and it was a punch. Um, and basically that's for creative crafty people unlike myself, but I knew Stampin' Up sells very well. So I bought the punch for a dollar at this estate sale and I believe it went up to $28. So I was pretty thrilled with that. I knew, I know there's a lot of creative people out there. Yep. Uh, 11 bids. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. It, it and then up uh, last minute. now, now I guess this is the caddy that holds the things you just sold. Is that the deal? <laughs> nope. That caddy holds all of the ink pads. Oh, the ink pads. Um, got it. Got it. Got ink it. Pads. So um, I did my research on that and I found out they, they sold between 30 and $50. So I took my chances and did a buy it now and did it for $35. And I believe I shipped it to California. Um, so the, the woman had paid $50 for the caddy and the shipping. And just to make sure you do have two, because it still says one available, right? Uh, no, I sold them both. Okay, well, it still says one available. So you might want to check on that That's after the show. That's not a live listing. That's not a live listing. I just sold the other one. Oh, okay. Coolio. Yeah. Then that's a boom. Wham, wham. Oh, pow, pow. That was really good. That's really good. So that that's just stuff I like to go find at um, tag sales and estate sales, because I know what sells. They got this coach purse here. Ah, the famous coach purse. It's a little wristlet, and um, I went to a coach outlet, so we know it was a real coach, um, and they were having 
these crazy sales. So I got this wristlet and a couple of other things for probably well under $30. The wristlet itself sold for, I bought it for $3. Not wow. bad. And All I figured right. I wanted to get it up there right away. So of course I'm in my car. So I realized the pictures aren't that wonderful. Um, I, we, we talked pri pre-show and I'm like, Hey, let's talk about your picture sitting in the front seat of your car with the sun shining in it a little bit there. Yeah, <laughs> I was in a hurry with that one. Um, I just wanted to see it because I had never really sold coach before. And, and I'm just kind of expanding my wings into pocketbooks and other things. So let's try this. I was pretty satisfied with the price. And so it sold, I think, for $26. 26 sure. yep. Yeah, so um, $3, you know, $23 profit. I'm good. So I'd like to find more of that. And last but not least, you got the flying monkey. Oh, the flying monkey. That was another tag sale find that I honestly paid a whole dime for. And I did my research. It was brand new with the tags. And I said, this is a big Broadway show. I know people love Wicked. Um, so I said, yeah, I'm just going to put it up for $25 and boom, it sold. So uh, two things, I'll address your object in a second, but I, I realize some people are having a hard time hearing Michelle. I have her volume all the way up. She's on an iPad. I have backed away from my microphone. So hopefully if you tur turn it up to hear her, I won't be so loud because now I'm a good distance from my mic. So unfortunately, I'm sorry. I mean, pfft, Michelle was working until four minutes before showtime. So sometimes you gotta make do with what you gotta make do with. Um, Technical difficulties, I apologize. Yeah. But here, here's what I liked about your flying monkey is if you look, you know, what eBay does is like, hey, man, this isn't for sale anymore, but here's some other flying monkeys. There's ones that are way cheaper than yours and you're still sold. So that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was pleased with that. I was pleased with that. So, you know, it's just, it, it's all trial and error, I guess. Oh, yeah. All right. So this week I'm going to share a record and here's why I'm going to share it. This is <laughs> a import of Fleetwood Mac rumors on white vinyl. Now, that circle sticker on the cover does say colored vinyl, but if someone had taken the time to take that sticker off, then this cover look, would look no different than the regular release on black vinyl. So if you ever run across Fleetwood Mac rumors, make sure you double check. If it's the white vinyl, it's in good shape. You can get about 60 bucks for it, as you can see right here. Uh, this is a uh, slightly damaged Insane Clown Posse sweatshirt that I showed on a thrift haul like just two weeks ago, and it went over to uh, England today, and there was some damage with little arrows to note the damage. There was some distressing to the pocket and to the sleeve, and I still sold it for uh, about, uh, with shipping and everything, it was about $62, and I paid about 4 bucks for it. Oh, uh, you want me to come closer to my mic now? All right. Try and find a happy medium here. There we go. Uh, and hey, what do you think about, Michelle, during Memorial Day weekend cookouts and parties? Yep, you think about going to eBay and buying Christmas music like this customer did. <laughs> now, uh, I don't think about that. Kim found this exact CD the other day, and I told her, eh, pass, I have an autographed version that I couldn't sell Christmas. And what do you know, like a week later, I sold it for 25 bucks. Fred Schneider who is the lead singer of the B-52s. This is one of his side projects, and he autographed the front. And I picked it up for $3.99 pre-Christmas, and I finally sold it on Memorial Day weekend for $25. Go get out. And then to go along with sweet, nice Christmas music, how about the Madonna sex book? Yep. Now, it doesn't command the money that it used to. If it's sealed, you're still going to get $150. But if it's opened and you know, and and the spiral binding had come apart and someone had kind of wound it back together, I still got fifty bucks for it. I paid five dollars for it at a garage sale, and I threw a few of the pictures in. Here's her in uh, uh, vanilla ice wrestling naked. So I uh, I didn't highlight any of the naughty naughty photos, but I highlighted a few of the photos, <laughs> and I was happy to turn five dollars into fifty dollars. Well, I have a story for that. Last year, I had one too, and we had the 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 um, wrapping was ripped, but I ended up selling it for uh, forty dollars. There you go. Yeah. All right, you've seen our scores now. Time for our duds of the week, where the, these are the mistakes Michelle and I made, things we should not have brought. 
brought. But <laughs> do not let our mistakes be yours. Now, your first one is this nice Avon uh, pin. Yeah, yeah. That came from my mother's estate. And um, Avon does not sell as hotly as you might think. Um, I was thinking, oh, maybe some old representative of Avon would like this. And I think it sold really, really low. So, um, yeah, that was a dud. <laughs> Some other stuff in Avon might sell higher, but a lot of the jewelry... Yeah, for the most part, Avon sucks. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I still have a ton of it, but now I'm just going to sell it and just get rid of it. I don't care if it makes a quarter at this point. And your record for a walking... Oh, $1.22? Uh, well, it says 99 cents. Oh, 99 cents. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, for a whopping 99 cents. I thought, you know, hey, maybe some old people would like the... um. The, the bands or whatnot and maybe some of this would go well some of the mixes the groups and whatnot yeah no eh. <laughs> all right those of you still saying you can't hear michelle i i can't do anything about it at this point she's on her ipad that's the only thing that's working i have her volume maxed so i'm oh. really sorry there you go do that that was a little bit louder in my ears so yeah i'm really really sorry so i mean it's unfortunate but you know with technical difficulties now i want to i want to bring up one thing about your record here Things I would have done differently. Okay. So you have this record of great big bands, and some of the big bands on the back are Tommy Dorsey, Duke Ellington, uh, Benny Goodman, Woody Herman. That should be in your title, not Columbia Special Products, not Vintage, not 33, not Vinyl. Should have been the great big bands, LP, and then all the band leaders' names. Got it. Because those are the buzzwords. Because 33 should be in your item specifics, which it isn't, naughty girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you, boy. Yeah, see, we got to work on your item specifics because that's how you sell things. Item specifics are the key to selling a ton of stuff, and you did not use these properly. Yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely right. get you squared away on that for sure. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, so here's my duds. I don't know why I bought this purse. When I bought it and when my assistant told me the comps, I'm like, why did I buy this purse? I'm thinking, because this is happening more than once because, you know, getting old sucks. I'm thinking I was looking at it, went to look it up, had a squirrel moment, turned away. It was sitting in my cart, and I just kept pushing the cart. And then I get home with shit that I didn't want. I'm like, oh, why did I buy no. this? <laughs> so, so I spent five dollars and it sold for a whopping thirteen bucks with free shipping. So that was a dud. But Ooh. here's my here's my real duds of the week. So let me explain something first. Uh, I showed you a score for a CD like I do every week. But sometimes even the master, that's me, has mistakes. And it's not so much mistakes, but when you buy a CD the day you buy it, it might be selling up here. And I buy so much stuff that I don't always get to list it right away. So by the time I list it, maybe it's selling here. And then by the time it sells, maybe it sells down here. So although it looked attractive the day I picked it up, by the time I get to it, it's not so attractive. Just to show you the example uh, of even I have some issues from time to time. I shipped these three CDs on Monday. I paid $19 for this one, and I sold it for $19. So, of course... When you come to take out your fees, guess what? You lost money. I see two of you now, Michelle. <laughs> so you're trying your computer. All right, hang on a quick sec. Say something. Hello. Nope, your computer's still not. Uh... I'm mute. Yep, so weird. Okay, back to me on this dystopia CD. I paid three bucks, and guess what I sold it for? Yeah, three bucks. And last but not least, uh, the super stocks, I paid $14.99, and I sold it for $15. So once you figure in tax and fees and everything else, those three CDs I ended up losing money on. The good thing is I got rid of them. I didn't lose a ton, but playing the CD game is kind of playing the stocks and bonds game. Some, you know, You try and sell when it's up high, but sometimes you don't. So, you know, just know that I, I have blunders, too. All right. So now, <laughs> now it's time for... Where in the world did our stuff go? Now, Michelle didn't have anything international this week, so I'll be handling this all by myself. And this week, I sold this Cannondale bike jersey. Uh, on the back was some uh, Southern California spots. And it went to Berlin, Germany. Now I sold it for like 20 bucks plus shipping. So it wasn't a big, big sale. But the re and, I, and I, I shipped a bu bunch of stuff internationally today. Today we went to Finland and the UK and uh, Brazil. 
But the reason I wanted to profile this one is this customer took time to send me an email and say, thanks, Jason. Beautiful bike shirt reminds me of the time in the early 90s when I tried to get to school in Mira Mesa near Miramar from the home of my host parents. No way. But on the streets at the beach up north LA, it was fun biking. Greetings from sunny Berlin to sunny Vegas. So I thought that was really nice and sweet that a buyer took the time to say, hey. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, now it's time for our thrifty tips of the week. This segment oh, is brought boy. to you by stamps.com, postage on demand. Print your own postage and shipping label in seconds right from your own home. I, I've needed, I need stamps.com every day for the different endeavors I'm in. And so, uh, oh, crap, that reminds me, I was supposed to ship something else, stamps.com today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll get it out tomorrow. My bad. All right, you're up Are for your watching? thrifty tip. Oh, probably. All right, you're up with your thrifting tip. Oh, my thrifting tip. What was my thrifting tip? Um, never miss an opportunity to hit the thrift stores on all the holidays that we have because they always have half-off sales. So this last weekend, Memorial Day weekend, I went to two savers, probably spent about $400 where I might have spent, I don't know, $750, $800. <laughs> um, I actually went out of my comfort zone going to the Hawaiian shirts um to the uh the, the ties and the belts and the shoes i didn't get anything in shoes but i did get a few ties um of the beatles era and i did find a lot of hawaiian shirts a lot of panama jack um a few tommy bahama and um, a few harley davidson shirts so those will be my next project coming up um i did find a lot of t-shirts as well and for those of you that know how much i love coffee and coffee mugs i found a huge mug with a pickle um handle and it says i'm kind of a big deal big deal and it, this was three dollars at the goodwill and i actually got it for a dollar fifty so i know doing my research i will probably sell it between well, i don't know 15 and 20 dollars i'll Very probably nice. do 20 dollars and do a best offer and only the only reason for that is because it's not in its original box. The, with the original box, it goes for thirty or above. So excellent tip. All right, mine had a weird uh, turn that I wasn't expecting. The consequences. Um, the the tip is one I've given many times. Use the thrifting board when you're in a store and you get to a dead end where you've got something you think is cool, but you don't know what it is. That's when you use a thrifting board. Don't, put, don't pop in everything you see, especially things that have barcodes, easy to research. But I wasn't sure, and, and this is me holding this scarf all the way out. That's my little tiny legs down below there. <laughs> my, little, my little tiny ankles. And so I wasn't sure if this scarf was something amazing or just good. And so within minutes, here's the post in the thrifting board. Uh, need quick help as Savers is closing. The ta only tag is 100% silk. Anyone know what this is? They have priced at 13 bucks. So if you've seen down below there, there was three, 63 comments within like 15 minutes. Wow. And although we did not come to a general consensus if it is Hermes or not, and we don't think it is, it was still a good purchase. And and here's where the consequences, like you, you, you don't think, you don't plan for this, but using the thrifting board as my helper for this, someone who had found a tiki bowl that I wanted saw this post and said, hey, yo, I'll trade you. <laughs> so really? uh, although the whole impetus of the post was to get help it worked in a fun way where yeah. i was about to buy the mole and she wanted this this scarf so guess what easy That's peasy right there That's so awesome. you never know when a post on a social media website will get you something that you desire yeah. and it wasn't the plan so but make sure to use a thrifting board when you are stumped in a thrift store i love surprises like that that's great <laughs> Oh now my. it's time for You Have Got to Be Ship Me, where Michelle and I will give you little tips and tricks on what to do and what not to do when you are shipping your items. So you're up first, Michelle. All right. So my shipping tip. Now that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this with a little personal story. A few years ago, um, I was kind of complacent about shipping. I would get a sale. Unfortunately, I'd wait a couple of days before I shipped it out. And I'd go, yeah, okay, I'll get that shipped. I'll get that shipped. Wrong thing for me to do. I need to ship immediately, if not that very same day. Um, so that my mistakes with shipping did get me suspended for a month or so. Um, but as I promised eBay, 
I actually promised them my firstborn and my only born <laughs> to get me back on. And um, of course they knew me and they were like, all right, Michelle, no problem. You know, just do your shipping as soon as possible. So I have done that. I've learned my hard, my lesson very hard. Um, and that is my motto is to get shipping out immediately, you know, within the allotted time that you state you're going to ship. And mine well, is usually 24 hours. And if I'm away, when I come back, if I have sales, then I usually give myself two days because sometimes the sales are voluminous. So, um, yes, do not yeah. ignore getting your shipping Don't done. ignore it. Don't ignore it. I learned a very hard lesson. I prep mine pre-show. If ah. you're selling quality plush that does not have electronics or stiff supports, you do not need to match your plush up to the exact size packing. It can be squished into a box because it'll just pop back up once the customer opens the box. Ta-da! There it as, goes. As you can see, my little pony doesn't really look like it goes in this box, but it did just fine. And look, he looks just fine. So do not overbox your plush. If it's quality, it's easy to squish down. It can go into a much smaller box. I'll leave my kind little... Kind of a FOMO there. Yes, I'll leave my little pony right here. I don't, and I like to see everyone in the chats going, I squish mine too. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's time for... Our eBay tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you with your eBay listings. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm up. And this is probably, you know, you've heard this before. But for me, when I get new items, I always do a little bit of research. I kind of look up at the prices, you know, for their sales and whatnot. And I go in between different price points. Um, I always like to write, aside from my little purse fiasco there, um, I always like to write a creative title and make sure that my, my description is um, pretty creative too. And always offer my help to the potential buyer. They can always message me. Um, they can ask me any questions they want. And in that realm, I communication is so key to me that I like to keep it light. I like to keep it positive. I need to keep it professional. So that's my LPP rule. Um, and as soon as I make that sale, again, my, my eBay tip, coincides with my shipping tip, ship it out right away. You want to make yourself as a seller your buyer's favorite person. I hope that made sense. It did. All right. All that's, right. That, that's my golden rule. That's my own personal golden rule. That's a good that's a good rule to live by. All right, heads up. Those of you might have little kids. Those of you might be offended by naked women's boobs. The boobs oh, no. are coming up. But there is a reason. I'm not showing boobs just to show boobs. But I am showing there's there are rules set up for eBay and how you list certain things because I catch a lot of people listing things in the adult category where sometimes it's hard to be found that don't need to be in the adult category. So the next picture is not even R-rated, it's PG-13 because you can show one set of boobs in a PG-13 movie, all right? So here it is. The group is called Boxer. The album is called Below the Belt, and this is the cover. So per eBay's rules on any media, and media is records, CDs, books, movies, if there's a swear word in the title, if there's nudity on the cover, you can sell it, you can publish it in the regular section. Now, you can't throw a swear word in just to throw one in, but there are some groups, there's one group who the group's name is F, U-C-K. <laughs> so if that is the listing, plus when you plug in a barcode for a media item, it'll bring up the picture. So if this seed, if I was selling this on CD, this picture would come up in eBay's database. So it is okay to sell things with swear words and nudity as long as it's media and as long as you're not just putting it in as commentary. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I think so. And I sold this record for 50 bucks. So if you see this record, buy it. <laughs> It's so a that's big a little, bolo. Yeah, that's a little that's a little uh, added bolo right there. I like that bolo. All right, speaking that's of cool. bolos. Oh no. Time for trendy bolos. What is trending right now? What's hot? What should you be looking for when you're in the thrift store to even get that extra bonus sale? Well, I like polka dots. 
I don't wear a lot of them, but I do like the style of them. Well, I, also, I like polka dots. Yo, I like, you know, I don't wear a lot of polka dots, but I do like them. Um, and they're making a big comeback this year. I noticed um, I, I had um, was reading an article and it depends on, I think on the size of the polka dot, what they're mixed in on the clothing, no matter what polka dots will never be forgotten, so to speak. Um, they're always in a design somewhere and there's always going to be a buyer looking for something polka dot, whether for themselves or for their children or even for their stuffed animal, who knows? <laughs> but I do like the, I do like the idea that polka dots are making a big comeback and it is trendy. Yeah. Cause there's, you sent me an article right here. Why polka dots mm -hmm. are the 2018 trend you yeah. need to master. So, mm -hmm. and it kind of gives you a list of what the polka dots are doing on all, all over these, um, the clothing items. Look at that. Very cool. Now, mm -hmm. My Trendy Bolo is in the same kind of vein, and it is everywhere you look. Everyone's wearing ripped and, and distressed denim. It's all the rage. I mean, it's yeah. never not been, but it really is right now. And this is a uh, website for uh, men. And since they showed boobs later, I, th I thought I'd show a little beefcake for the ladies. So there <laughs> you go. How to choose ripped and torn jeans for men. And there's a variety of things. Uh, holes, uh, shreds, distressed, cut, scrapes. But I wanted to show you that I sold these Levi 501s. As you can see, they're nicely well-worn in. And this was not done on purpose. This was how someone wore them in. So the pocket's all beat up. That's a little shreddy. That's a little shreddy right there. Uh, the pant legs got a little bit going on. And I sold those for $40. And I got distressed right in the title. Wow. Now, uh, my last assistant who lo no longer works for me, and this could be one of the reasons, this pocket has a hole in it. This pocket has a hole in it. I knew that. We were supposed to describe it. If you look at her condition field, no rips, holes, or tears. What? <laughs> so that just got shipped out. I sure hope to hell that that doesn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> and bite me in the ass, no pun intended, since it was ass pockets that had the holes in them. I'm sure they won't. <laughs> ah, couldn't believe it. All right, and then our last segment. Whoop, I'm on the wrong screen. Our viewers tip of the week. Now, all of you watching live, hey, how are you? Love you. Thank you for watching live. Do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up down below. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. But those of you who watch after the fact, we love you just as much too. And a lot of you love to leave little bonus tips after the fact under the show. So if you're watching after the fact and you've got something to add to a tip that we gave today, please drop your note in and maybe we'll read it on the air. So Vicki Olson had a great little, uh, little tidbit to share. Always remember that used cardboard boxes lose 70% of their strength compared to those being used for the first time. I highly recommend recycling wow. boxes. I've done it my whole career, but she is very right that the more it gets used, the less strength it has. So just be aware of that. If you're having some fine china that you're shipping or a paper thin champagne flute, you might want to go for the fresh box instead of the box has been used three times already. So just keep that in mind and keep up the awesome tips from all our viewers. We love you guys. All right. So uh, next show up is this Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. It is a Thrifty Business Thrift Hall. And yes, Debbie, Stephanie, and Kim, the fearsome threesome, outthrifted me on sale day on Monday. Now, there is a very specific reason why they outthrifted me. Uh, and we won't share that right now. We'll leave that surprise for, for Saturday. So tune in Saturday. Now, I we did thrift prior to that Monday, so I do have a few things to share, but the girls crushed it, and I've not seen their stuff. They told me about what they found. They started Savers. They went to the bins, and I know Kim picked up a $500 jacket at the bins. Wow. At the bins, it means wow. that jacket costs like <laughs> bucks or something. Oh, my God. So I have one question for you. Yo. How did they outthrift the pro thrifter? Well, you got to tune in Saturday to find oh. out. That's the whole key. Right. There is a very specific reason why that happened so okay. uh i want i want y'all to tune in on saturday to find out plus we do all all three of us have good things to share so we want to make sure that you realize it's not going to be it is going to be goof on jason day so if you if you enjoy that please tune in <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm definitely hanging out for that one yeah 
All right. Uh, we got one more thing to do, but I want to get Barbara in here because I'm assuming she's going to love this just as much. So let's get our guest in here tonight. Our guest is Barbara Boschen, co-founder of Co-Merchant, how to sell your Amazon products on different platforms like Walmart and Jet. Barbara, how the heck are you? I am great. How are you? Good. All right. So hey, you probably don't know this, but we did a contest in the Thrifty Board this week, and I thought I'd have you on to show you the results because I thought you'd get a kick out of it too. <laughs> So I found, I love finding ridiculous t-shirts. And when I say ridiculous, here is what I'm talking about. These are the four examples I used for the contest. I found a t-shirt that said anal bleach. <laughs> I found a t-shirt that said I survived the humidity in Baltimore in 1991. Almost. I found a t-shirt that someone glued actual pumpkin seeds to a shirt, then glued on orange yarn so there could be a pumpkin at Christmas. <laughs> And then I found a shirt that says, do not stake or loan this man any money. He's a cheat and a liar with a picture of the dude. Oh, no. <laughs> so we had everyone go to the thrift store, take a picture of themselves holding the weirdest shirt they could find. And first up, we were going to do our honorable mentions. We ended up picking six winners. And so these are the ones that were close, but no cigar. This one, although not a t-shirt, some crafter took the waistband of jeans and made this sweatshirt a V-neck. That is actual zipper. <laughs> like, I'm like, That's oh, I kind of horrible. I, 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 I kind of like it though. <laughs> hmm. All right, now these were honorable mentions because uh, Tina found both of these, and they kind of uh, she related them to me. She found the Big Kahuna Burger and Control Your Orgasms. It's just my beard. <laughs> oh, by the way, there are some swear words coming up, just as, and I won't read them out loud. This shirt says, F your bitch and the click you claim. Don't even know what the heck that means. This one is Jesus is an Indians fan. And what I love about this homemade shirt true. is uh, mis misuse of, uh, it should be Jesus is an Indians fan. And no, uh, yeah, everyone's an Indians fan. No one's a Cleveland Browns fan. If you remember, Bo knows baseball, Bo knows football, Bo knows your yeah. mama. That was yeah. an honorable mention from Angela Ritchie, who's in the chat. Uh, no one does 69 like me. Another honorable mention. <laughs> and a probably purchased <laughs> at the fair, fresh airbrushing Baby Maker 2000. <laughs> wow. Now you're like, you're like, hey, what's so weird about this Minions? It's a homemade Minion shirt. You can buy a Minion shirt cheaply at Walmart, yet someone took the time to make their own. Uh, this shirt is Live Like Berto. I don't know who Berto is, but it is a grown man dressed as a Cub Scout. This is a homemade Jonas Brothers shirt that says Mrs. Jonas on the back. That's a scary one. <laughs> and this is Ted Cruz, who was the Zodiac Killer. So those are all our honorable mentions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time for our winners. Now, what do they win, Bob? Well, let me tell you. Some of you will win some eBay tape, and I got a variety of colors. And then a couple of you will win a Den of Sin Mai Tai glass straight from my bar. And then I even have this cool eBay dongle where you plug it into the USB. You can charge your phone, your, your Bluetooth speaker, and your Bluetooth headphones all at the same time. Wow. All right. Ready for the winners. This one tickled me to no end. Why this shirt was made, <laughs> I have no idea. You have died of dysentery. <laughs> So, Jim Saddlemeyer, you have won because of you have died of dysentery. Who made that shirt? I don't understand. Okay, this one, everyone loves. And actually, this is a good shirt to flip. It's a little tricky to find, but that's a glass of iced tea with ice cubes in it. So, for those of you who don't understand, the big guy is iced tea, a wrapper, and the little heads are ice cube, the wrapper. So, iced tea with ice cubes. Ice cube. <laughs> okay, this one's from, uh, from Michelle Brian Casey. This says, I love cats, but I can't eat a whole one. And it's a homemade shirt. <laughs> Someone's got some sick, twisted idea. <laughs> oh, that one was from the, the game Oregon Trail. That's what. That's why you died of dysentery. Ah. Uh. All right. So this was a group of kids who were on a team, and they were going to state. So they made their own shirt of their faces. Obviously, someone didn't know how to use uh, Photoshop all that well, because this is pretty rookie. But and very scary, but we loved it because who gives it up? You know, you made that shirt, you were on the team, you went to state, and you just donated your shirt. Plus, who would buy it? Who would buy it? All right, and our last two winners this is all our favorites. So, all the judges, so it's Stephanie, Debbie, myself, and Stacy, and Kim, 
you dead dog. I ain't Ian, Ian bullshitting. <laughs> Someone took time to make that. What? <laughs> And iron on all the letters individually. Yes. And the last one is excommunicated Mormon drinking team. Finish your beer. There are sober Mormons in Utah. And and Barbara Colson, who's on that right there, who is Mormon, said, hey, I'm Mormon and I find that funny. So <laughs> so those are all the winners. Uh, and I forgot to mention their names. So I will tag you all in the thrifting board. So thank you all for participating. We love when we do fun little contests at, uh, you know, we're all working hard to make money, and that's what Barbara's about to teach us how to make more money. But mm. there's always a little bit of time for fun and shenanigans. So, Barbara, how the heck are you? Always. I'm fine. That's great. I could have brought if I if I had been aware of this contest, I would have contributed my Walmart favorite T-shirt from Walmart. It has unicorns and butterflies and flowers and rainbows all in one wonderful shirt. I was like, this is the most messed up adult shirt I've ever seen. <laughs> so, so sweet. Just needed a leprechaun and maybe some sugar cubes raining down and it would have been perfect. All right. So speaking of Walmart, we're going to get to that. But we need to back up your story because you sell and teach others how to sell in Walmart. And I'm going to guess, let me throw it to the chat. How many of you didn't know you can sell in Walmart as a third party seller like we do on Amazon? I'm going to guess a lot of you didn't know that. And I'm guessing a lot of you don't know about Jet, but let's back it up there. So we know you're in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So uh, why, don't you, why don't you give us the 60 second Barbara bio, how you got from, from, you know, womb to Jet. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, let, let's see. Um, uh, I sort of had all this like entrepreneur stuff in my blood, um, but I went to college and I graduated and I went in the corporate world. And after working 80 hours a week and being ground to a little tiny nub, I was like, I got to change this up. And I started selling. I had my first garage sale on eBay. And the reason I had my first garage sale is because um, I lived off a road, off a road, off a road. And I was gonna looking at maybe $10 if I had a garage sale. And I lo and behold had a $500 garage sale. And I'm like, there might be something to this internet thing. I'm going <laughs> to do something with that. And I looked at that and I said, I'm going to do this on the side. I'm going to look at. Uh, I'm going to sell on eBay. Uh, this Amazon thing is happening. I'm going to get in on that. I've been selling on Amazon since 2009 and on eBay since uh, early 2000s. And I'm going to see if I can scale this to replace my income um, to help me have a life and not a job. So that's how I got here. And I have the added advantage of being raised by uh, my father was a builder, uh, had his own business, but he also ran a flea market for 40, for 40 years to help raise money for the local firehouse. So, so, so wait, so he, so he had a, a full-time career and he ran a flea market. Yes. And he did That's that on the so weekends. Cool. Yeah. That's so cool. When you told me that earlier, I'm like, Oh my God, your dad owned a flea market. And, and, and so the, what a, what a, what a cool thing. He, he used it to raise money for the local fire department. Yeah. They, um, they went, their plan for retirement was to go to um, collect antiques and collectibles or them. And then when they retired, they would sell them off, which ended up being my job. When my father passed away, I ended up cleaning the hoarder house out. It took me about two years to empty it all out. But And you couldn't throw anything out because he would find silver and gold scrap at the flea market. And he'd buy it and he'd put it in a little jar or something in the house. And then he'd put a big pile of nails over top of it and put it in a coffee can. So he, wow. was, a he was a builder. Right. So there were a lot of jar a lot of coffee cans full of nails and some of them had a gold in it or a bag, of, you know, five hundred dollars or some silver. So everything had to be gone through in that house. And it was a huge probably it was a four bedroom house with a huge um, addition on it that was all storage. So it took us forever to go through it and it was like but it was sort of, you know, in a weird, annoying, horrible takes forever way like a treasure hunt because you didn't know if you were opening up a container full of nails or if it at the bottom of that, there was a piece of Tiffany. So it was kind of, you know, exciting sometimes. So we'd be, you'd hear my brother be in one side of the house. I'd be in another here. Woo. And then, and then once in a while you're like, Holy crap, what's this? <laughs> Let's just put that over. And then the ones that didn't have anything good, you heard the sad trombones. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, all right, throw this in the garbage. <laughs> But that really laid the whole foundation for me really understanding this because this was just a flea market, right? So 
um, I would I started by doing um, I have some of them still here because I, I do less and less yeah still sell on eBay but I do it in a re-leveraged of everything that I do on the other site so I look at how I make money is I find one thing and I put it everywhere because the number one tip I can give you is the question I always ask when I when I when I do talk or teach I say what's the number one way to sell more stuff I don't have any musical, it's, you know, I would have a drum roll here. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> be where you need to be when somebody's looking for what you have. So if that's on eBay, if that's on Jet, if that's on Walmart, if that's on Amazon, you need to be in as many places with that same piece um, so that someone looking for it finds it. And that's how you sell. It's not, it's pictures, it's attributes, it's all that stuff but you gotta be where they are at all times. So, and a drum roll. Um, but that really was, it was really helped me understand and get started and have a confidence that, you know, at a certain point where I had made enough income, you know, to pay for the ballet lessons and the um, shore trips and, you know, um, you know, dental work, that I could actually scale that up because of the background that I had, you know, growing up and you know, we weren't allowed to play in the house. We had to go outside. It's God forbid. <laughs> you we, can't play we, with these cans in the house. <laughs> but no, there was like full on antiques in every single room, you know, like big, um, uh, those glass globe, um, lights. If you've ever seen them They're from the late 1800s. So there was like everything in our house. And we were like, go outside, play outside. Don't throw balls in the house. That would be bad. Um, so what uh, what year was that that you first hopped onto eBay? I think that, I think that garage sale was the. I mean, I probably done stuff here and there, but that garage sale was really the aha moment for me. And I'm gonna think it was 2001. Okay. Yeah, so that was a really big aha moment. I'm like, wow, this is really something. And um, I was showing you guys this before, but I have, you know, I got to the point where I could get this. Here's the Molly doll from Big Comfy Couch. For 50 cents and sell it for 15 20 dollars and i was like you know and I, by the way in my corporate job i was in finance so i was like that is some margin i love that you know and i have a whole bunch of stuff down here too that i brought off the shelf you guys recognize that um and that was really what was so interesting to me and i also love the hunt and the thrill of the find and you know as i've grown my business and i've gone on to add other things into the mix that just gets replicated and built on. So, um, you know, a lot of times what I tell people is when you're looking at what you're doing, think about, they'll ask me like, how can I do private label? How can I sell on this? How can I do that? It's like, think about what you're doing and really you, you know how to do it. You just have to extend it. You just have to take it a little further. So it's, it's all about not having all your eggs in one basket too, because. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, we've all either happened to, like having a Michelle, she got booted off eBay for a little while. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've all either been in that position or known someone that's been like, and we can't sell where today. So if you're only selling in one place and mm -hmm. you wake up and you can't sell there, you're kind of screwed. So you got to make sure that you can continue on somewhere. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. I got suspended. Um, I tried to block this memory on Amazon after I had the warehouse, after I had 15 people going out and shopping at thrift stores and um, uh, rummage sales and TJ Maxx and Walmart. And you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, and I'm like, what? What? I'm just. What do you mean? I'm suspended? How could I be suspended? And I got reinstated fairly quickly. It took about three weeks, but it really made me start thinking about that whole diversification thing, and that just being in one place was not cool. I hadn't been selling on eBay anymore because I was relying entirely on Amazon, um, and you know, we the shoppers were tending to be more so um, going towards new stuff. Uh, and I literally like the second after I got reinstated, my eBay store was back up and running. I had, you know, everything was being listed on Amazon, on eBay, on Jet, on Walmart. Um, and we continue down that path today. We're constantly, we're looking now at Google shopping and we're looking at um, our platform doesn't have a facility to put you on eBay because I feel like there's some um, products out there that do a pretty good job to re-leverage you. You know, you have to put your attributes in, you have to do some work, but um I think that um, we're going to be adding in eBay shortly so that you can easily take that information and trip you have in one place, whether it's on eBay to Amazon or Amazon to Jet or whatever, 
and re-leverage that information so that you're just not um, uh, risky. You want to de-risk your portfolio with whatever you're doing and try to be in other places. So, you know, someone just said something amazing in the chat to, to talk about what we were just saying. I don't plan on getting booted off eBay ever. No, most people don't ever don't. plan on it. I'm guessing <laughs> no one plans on it, Heather, but here's what happens, Heather. Michelle just wasn't shipping in time and she got the boot. Yeah. If you, if you go to list something that you don't realize is recalled and you get a hand slap, no biggie. If you do it again for another product the next day and get another hand slap, and maybe the third day you list a, a, a fake product, you're going to get pulled off. Now, you didn't intend to list things that were recalled or fake, but you got caught up in it. I've listed fake things. I've listed recalled things. I never intend to. No one ever intends to. But the whole point of this talk, especially with Barbara, is to be diversified. No one ever plans on getting kicked off. Yeah. Ever. I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, you know, what are you going to do when you grow up? What are you going to be? And like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I don't expect you to have your full life planned, but you know, you need to start thinking about the plan and the backup mm -hmm. plan for the plan. Because not, you know, you don't know what life's going to throw at you. And in this day and age, everything changes so much. Um, I can probably pick uh, a dozen people I used to work with that are not doing what they were doing and are doing something entirely different if they're doing anything at all. You know, they have to have a backup plan. Because, um, you know, the financial crisis was a big issue for my in-laws. Um, you know, just if you don't have any flexibility or anything in the back, and it may, it may mean you have to work a little harder, but that's okay. You try to leverage, you know, the, the people you can and the resources you can to make that extra work as little as possible, but to have that security. So, Barbara, speaking of that, how did you get into Amazon? Well, that was because of the used stuffed animals, oddly enough. I had been selling them on eBay, and um, I was working a lot, so I, all my Christmas shopping was done um, at work um, online, and they would send it to me at work, and I'd wrap it up. My husband would come on uh, uh, the day Christmas Eve and help me wrap everything up so we could get it under the tree in the morning. Um, and I said, sell yours. I'm like, sell my what? What do I have? And that's when I came to realize that you could sell used stuffed animals on Amazon. So the what? Amazon... <laughs> and they're collectibles, you know, they, they have to be, yeah. But, you know, we, we always did an excellent job of cleaning them and prepare, repairing them. I never sold, like, you know, you would never get a, a stuffed animal for me and the neck would be like that and it would just fall over. Um, they were always clean. They were always, um, anti uh, we always sanitize them. And I even had a steam um, closet that you would put them in and it would get any errant smells out of there, you know, because you don't know things, um, you know. Sure people's sensitivities are. Um, and that was the beginning. And that's when I said, Oh, okay, let me give this a shot. I used to go and do arbitrage. Um, I go to the thrift store, I'd go to TJ Maxx, I'd go to Walmart at lunchtime. And my now business partner would be like, doesn't your husband get a little irritated that you shop every day? He's like, I understand, like, you have your own job and everything. But and I don't mean to be sexist, but it seems kind of funny that your entire car is full of stuff. It's like, yeah, my husband kind of likes that. Likes yeah. that a lot. It's that's, the that's, income. Yeah, that's that's the money in that car. Um, you know, and then my business partner started coming out with me and I taught him how to do it. And um, again, at my peak, I had 15 people shopping all over the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And we were just putting everything on Amazon. Um, after that, we changed a little bit and we got, we, we got a little bit more stable. I think a lot of times when you're selling... The cool thing about selling on eBay and Amazon and thrifting is that you always get to see something. You find that cool new thing. I agree. The downside is sometimes you don't know what you have. So you could think it's a genuine thing or you could, you know, a couple times we started to pack something and I realized it weighed a little bit more than I thought it should. And inside like a backpack was a hat, you know, like, oh, that would have been bad to ship out <laughs> something to somebody with a price tag from TJ Maxx on it that I had. Ah! So, you know, now we are stabilizing and we still sell on uh, every day. Stuff is selling on every platform. So that's great. I'm really happy with that. And I and know I'm, that. Go ahead. I'll say I'm guessing it's all FBA, correct? Um, no, we do a lot of shipping ourselves. Too. Oh, nice. Because, okay. Because so Walmart is actually all self-shipping. All right, cool. Let's, let's get to that. But just yeah. I want to make sure because we always have new viewers who are new to selling. So. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know, in case you're a little like, what are all these terms? What's happening? Uh, so FBA is fulfillment by Amazon. That means you take your products, you send them to Amazon, and then Amazon ships them for you. Mm 
Merchant Fulfilled is what I do. See all these CDs right here? Those are all listed on Amazon. And when it, when it sells on Amazon, Amazon tells me to ship it. Mm -hmm. And so apparently, which is unbeknownst to me, I, I am fully aware that you can sell on Walmart. I, I didn't. I guess I never thought of it, but Walmart is all merchant fulfilled, huh? Yes. Um, that wow. well, you can use a third party fulfillment house. It just can't be called Amazon. That's the only one that's not allowed. So if you have another, like they actually partnered with FedEx, um, and you can send all your stuff to FedEx, and FedEx will fulfill it for you. Um, obviously, there's a lot of um, other uh, companies that do that as well, um, and will hold your stuff and fulfill it and ship it to the customer. So there's a lot of ways to do it. You don't have to do it yourself, but you cannot use FBA. Okay, so to sell on Walmart, you can do Merchant Fulfilled. Does it have to be new items? And Walmart is all new items, okay. as is Jet. They're all new items. Mm -hmm. So no so use plush. No use <laughs> no. Right. That'll have to and keep no over CDs. in Bonanza uh, and um, eBay. So no. someone had a great question, and and I think I know the answer, but I'm gonna let you answer because it's your 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 thing. Uh, <laughs> don't you have to have a high dollar business to sell on Walmart? And Walmart does require a fairly well. Let's put it this way: your it doesn't have to be your Amazon sales; it's your total business. So if you had a thrift store that you ran, or you had um, a resale, you know, some kind of resale store, or you have a flea market business, basically. Um, it, you have, they are looking for you to do about 400,000 a year in total sales. Okay. So it what is. they're basically saying is we want you to be um, a business that's dedicated to this, right? So you've got staff, if you're doing 400,000, you probably have some level of staff, some level of support. You figure out how to do shipping by that point. You know, you're not going to disappoint their customers. So they used to be a million dollars um, and they're slowly dropping it. I think as they get more comfortable um, with their systems and dealing with third party, because they've only been allowing third party in for about a year and a half. I think they'll continue to drop it. So you think they'll continue to drop the level? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe by the time we get to Q4, it'll be a quarter million and maybe even less after in the coming year. They're just testing. They just don't have all the things that Amazon has and eBay have to, to scale. Um, the businesses, all right, so they don't have an FBA yet. So they don't have um, a way for small sellers to ship reliably like Amazon does. They don't have, um, and they also want to try to weed out with that $400,000 um, any scammers. Not that smaller sellers are scammers, but um, you also have to be a US-based business too, which is um, something that's not necessarily the case on Amazon. So they're, they're trying, to, trying to avoid some of the pitfalls that Amazon has fell, fallen into and eBay. So I need to back up, Michelle and Barbara, because there's a good question from what we talked about already. Uh, Aaron wants to know, how is the return rate on vintage collectible plush on Amazon? I sell a ton of it on eBay besides collecting it. It may be <laughs> worth doing Amazon. So she's never she's never went down that avenue. Did you have a lot of returns? I, You know what the problem is, is you have to be very crystal clear because a lot of times people are think I don't know why they think they're buying a 20 a toy that hasn't been produced in 20 years brand new that was where you would fall into trouble so I made very certain that um, to show when, when you do condition pictures because in the old days you didn't you you could put your you would show like a brand new toy even though yours might have be a little worn and it would still be acceptable but now they have you load a picture up I think that happened in two or three years ago so the return rate, if you have a good listing, as would be the same on eBay, um, it, I feel that it was pretty nominal. Only when there was some confusion as to whether they bought a new or a used, which I think Amazon is pretty well sorted out. Yeah, I think I'm going to try some of my... I've never tried... And I knew people sell plush on there, but I, I've never tried it. So I think I'm going to give that a whirl because... Yeah, and it, there's a here. lot less people doing it. I got it. my little pony. <laughs> you have to fill out applications to be approved on Walmart and Jet. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and so yeah, go ahead, Michelle. Oh, no, go, no, go ahead. Say, and where does co-merchant play a place in this? Oh, so basically, um, so as I was saying that um, if you are on Amazon or you are on eBay um, and you want to go to another platform, it's a lot of work, right? You have to make mm -hmm. new listings. So you have to find a way, much like it's a lot of work to do your accounting, much like it's a lot, a lot of work to do prep you find resources that'll help you do these things. Co-merchant, when we got suspended and came back alive again, it's funny, my business partner got suspended at the same time. Um, he had a condition issue and I was selling counterfeit soap. 
Yeah, we were in our basement with a big vat, stirring it around. I had the kids <laughs> doing printing on the side with stamps. It was ridiculous. But um, I guess somebody felt that the price that they paid and the way that they were going to be able to return it, they were like, well, it's counterfeit, so I don't have to pay for my return shipping, even though I totally wanted this to be of it. So um, once we got back on, I said, we need to diversify onto other platforms, and you couldn't go on Jet. You need someone to facilitate your listing on there, which is when we decided that we wanted a very simple way. It was a lot of work to relist. Um, we wanted a very simple way to take the work we'd already done and all the sourcing, all the prepping, all that stuff, and just redeploy it as simply as possible. And the best way to do that was via our platform, which takes your catalog. Either it can take um, a flat file catalog, so you could download all your stuff if you were on eBay, um, and do a flat file, and then load it up into a uh, jet into Walmart. Or you could take your listings the same way, flat file out of um, Amazon. And we do that for you. We basically download everything for you, add the cat, translate it into the proper categories that apply on Jet and Walmart, and it goes live. Um, and then on Jet, they have to approve your catalog. They, some stuff is automatically goes in according to UPC. Um, uh, some stuff has to be approved because they'll match it. They try to keep the catalog very, very clean. On Walmart, stuff's live within you know 20 minutes. Just like Amazon and eBay, so it's pretty. It simple. is pretty fast. Yeah. And so, how long has that has Comerchant been around? Uh, we launched with Jet. Uh, so I guess this August will be two years. Okay. Or two and a half years since we started development. All right. So we have some good questions from the chat about all this because you know I love to bring new new ideas, new avenues. Mm -hmm. um, how hard? Uh, Red Fern wants to know how hard is it to make sure you take down a listing from Walmart or Jet if it sells on Amazon. So if you're cross-posting oh. one item across three platforms. Uh, we actually automatically sync the listing. So if you are on um, Jet and you sell it, and um, Amazon knows it's, um, Amazon will probably be fulfilling it for you, but even if not, we take it down. So it's automatically synced. Uh, I think it's every, it's every five minutes and every 20 minutes we automatically sync pricing. All right, so and so this has happened to me and there's a question from the chat, so. What do you do if it sells on two platforms at once? And it's happened to me. One it item happened to me too. Three platforms at the same time. Uh, it happened to me on with um, somebody bought thirty bars of soap. Thirty bars of soap, three times in three platforms, and um, they did it so quickly that we didn't. We were able to compensate about half of them out in the crisscross, um, but the other fifteen, I had to cancel some orders. So it can happen. It's just very rarely does. Now, not that I want to pit one, one um, <laughs> uh, website against the others, but it, do you have one that is better to cancel on or than others? You know, it, one that's maybe a little what? less. I think Amazon really penalizes you if you cancel. Um, Jet is under somewhat understanding, you know, and Jet, Jet and Walmart are more understanding. If you fail you get suspended. One of the suspensions is you, you, you can't play for seven days and then seven days later you're back up or um, you're suspended and then you call them and like, well, what happened? I'm like, well, I thought I had two, but I only had one. Okay, don't do it again. Whereas in Amazon, you know, there's, I picture across some burning logs and fire and some sparks. Um, I think eBay is probably somewhere in the middle of all that. I, have, I, I don't have too much personal experience with being, seeing anything there. Um, in terms of suspension, but you know, got it. Wow. Amazon so people shrink in fear from Amazon, right? <laughs> um, I believe Marianne Severson had a question. She wanted to know if you could sell Costco items. Yeah, on, on Walmart. As long as they're new. As long as they're new. As long as they're. I think new. the only thing they don't have too many precluded brands. I think Stonewall Kitchen is precluded. Um, I really ran into so few on Walmart. And Jet, what the, there's one on Jet that's precluded, but it's not like Amazon where there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds. Um, so do, and, and there's like, what is there, a couple dozen on eBay you can't really sell without getting, uh, um, Beach so Beachbody. Walmart, I'm sorry. I was saying on, on eBay you can't sell Beachbody. Yeah, I know Coach is kind of issue-ish too, right? You can have an issue with Coach on eBay. So we're going to say, Michelle? <laughs> I was going to say, um, on Jet and Walmart, do they require invoices? Do they require a letter of authorization? No. 
for for someone. Um, okay. No, you don't have to prove anything. Like it's almost like on Amazon, you're guilty to you prove you're innocent. Um, and then on those platforms, at least because they're so new, you're innocent. And then until they prove you guilty, right? So um, I haven't heard the the issues that I've heard, you know, that that are so present in Amazon. And and some of it is Jet controls their environment very tightly. You know, you can't list any. It's harder to get a listing live um, because they want to match it to make sure there's not 75 tubes of crest. They just want to have one tube. Um, and then, and Walmart is, you know, trying to, you know, block and tackle a little bit by making that, uh, entry level so high. Um, okay. but yeah, so in fact, jet works really hard. I'm really impressed with their, um, pricing it, their dynamic pricing engine. When you go on eBay and you want to buy like, I don't know why you don't want to buy toothpaste on eBay, but let's do my toothpaste. You <laughs> may get 20 or 30 listings of the same, you know, tube of toothpaste. If you go on Amazon, you might have 10 listings, two tubes of toothpaste, one tube of toothpaste, toothpaste with a lip balm, which drives me crazy, that lip balm listing. Um, and, you know, when you go on Jet, you have one tube of toothpaste. If you want to buy two of them, they'll give you a discount. You want to buy three, they'll give you a discount. Hey, add in a, a dental floss and we're going to give you free shipping. Oh, you know what? And if you want to get the... Um, uh, um, it's dental floss, to tooth, like the extra special toothbrush... We're going to throw that in and we'll give you another discount. So they're constantly trying to get as much stuff into the basket. I sell a lot of uh, soap and lotion products. I routinely have multi-unit um, sales because they just mash all that stuff together and they just keep throwing out in front of the customer. And the customer's like, oh, I'm saving so much money. You know, it's 1%, it's 2%. But, you know, after you get this stickiness factor that, that people really like, and if you've got similar products, they'll crisscross them against, you, you know, with each other which I wish eBay, Amazon, and Walmart would do because it's total genius. Yeah, yeah. So eBay's going to get better because they're, they're bringing, uh, you know, they're trying to catalog everything. They're way yeah. behind the game, way behind. But with the new seller, uh, summer seller release, you'll be able to create your own listings like you can do on these other platforms. And then they see that you create one, Barbara, and Michelle creates one, and I create one for the mm -hmm. same product. They'll notice it, and they'll merge them all together. So you That's won't good. have 72 listings for the same tube of toothpaste. There'll be one with all the sellers on it. Now, how are oh, they wow. going to handle like when there's going to like are they going to be able to do that with used? I would assume so. And and, and where I'm trying to work with them is CDs, uh, and, and this is becoming a thing of the past. But since they're already out there, back when CDs were still hot, you would um, Harry Connick re would release a Christmas CD, and it'd have these ten songs, mm -hmm. and then Walmart would have an exclusive version with an extra song. And then Target would have another exclusive version with a different extra song. So those are not the same releases. Right. Mm -mm. Yet, they all fall under one umbrella. Well, if I'm the guy who wants to track off the Target version, I only want to look at that listing, you know? And so there's still there's still work to be done. And I'm in contact with the team in charge, especially the CD section, because that's my jam. And I just, today I was trying to show two examples of these two CDs to my assistant, and they weren't in the database. I'm like, all right, well, here's two new... Two new examples of things I got to show to eBay that you need to make mm -hmm. sure that you have a more robust. But now that we can create them, I'll be able to help them build that database because I huge. sell a lot of CDs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think that's huge because I think that is that is the issue. Like to me, the the issue is that you have to look through so much and understand so much, and all you want is a tube of toothpaste. On on Amazon, you still have to do that. You're just not sure if the tube of toothpaste is has lead in it or came from some weird, strange place, right? And that's the concern I have when I'm shopping on Amazon now. I'm like, I'm not too confident that this is genuine. On um, on Jet, I'm getting a lot of toothpaste. I'm pretty comfortable with the Jet the Jet toothpaste. And in Walmart, you know, what people are doing is they're finding a whole bunch of holes there as well to get around all the restrictions. So, yeah. Oh, the one restriction on Walmart is if, let's say you have that tube of toothpaste again for, you know, $4.99. It's on Amazon for $4.29. You can't sell it. All right, so we're a little over the hour, even though we started late, but all suddenly, all suddenly, the flood of good questions just came in. So let's yeah, really? Real quick, because so, well, they're really good questions. I don't want to drop this. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Michelle, I think you have one of the questions. I think so. Linda Pacheco, I hope I pronounced her name right. I apologize if I didn't. Um, she wants to know, how do you prove your level of volume to get into Walmart? Well, I'm not sure. Um, what you have to prove. So if you told them 400,000, they're gonna look at a couple things. They're gonna look at your internet presence. So they're gonna go over to eBay and they're gonna look at your account and they're gonna say, 
bro, you know what? I'm looking at the rating. I'm looking at the ranks. You know, I think they've got some kind of internal thing that says if you've got 5,000 reviews, then you must be a seller at, you know, X level. You have some internet level experience. If they look at your reviews, we just had a customer that got turned down because their eBay reviews were bad. Um, you know, and it's like, they're like, can you tell me why I haven't heard from Walmart? I'm like, they don't like what you look like on eBay. So you got to go clean that up. Um, but that's how they're doing. So they're not, you don't have to give them a, a 1099 or a tax return, but they are try, like, if you're only selling a couple things a month, they're going to be able to tell that you're, you don't have a robust presence. Yeah, that's true. Like, Oh, I just started selling yesterday. Yeah. I've been doing 400,000. Sure. I have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, if you had, if you had a brick and mortar business and just started and this had been selling on Amazon for you know a year, you probably would be able to, they probably, you could probably say that to them and say, Hey, I got a brick and mortar business and I just started putting my products on, on Amazon or on, on eBay, you know, and they probably, cause they just want someone who understands how commerce works. All right. So Marianne wants to know, can you ship internationally on both jet and Walmart with a discounted shipping rate? Like eBay does for us top brand sellers. No. Okay. <laughs> that was an easy enough question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Heather, Heather Melkoff, um, she wants to know what is the price point of the items that you sell? Oh, my price point is $25, my average price point or average order value. Now, do you have anything really high end? Are you selling like a $10,000 chandelier or anything? I had two or three of those. No. Um, <laughs> by and large, I, I, I probably run from about, I don't really sell anything for less than $15, and I've got a few things in the, you know, the $100 area. Okay. Wow. Impressive. <laughs> uh, so Aaron says, last time I checked, Walmart's return exchange policies did not, do not apply to third-party purchases off of Walmart's site. Is that still the policy? I think there, I think you have to work that. Um, I'm trying to recall if they changed. I think it's still up to you, but you have to pay attention. So I know they will give a rebate, a refund to somebody that complains. And then you may have to, you have to go fight for that if that's the case. So, and then I think we're going to end this question. It got to ask a little earlier, but it, it'll be perfect because it's not so specific to what we're talking about. But it's from Linda, and she says, "I am diversified on four platforms." Good job, Linda. Mm -hmm. Yay! Very when good. you started to sell on more and more platforms, at what point did you really start to need help with your business and get employees? So, you know, because I always tell people the way to take it your your business to the next level is especially if you're doing eBay, at least hire someone to do all your pictures like one day a week. Mm -hmm. Start there. So for you, where did it start? To start it started adding? before I even got on another platform. I mean, FBA was my first employee, right? Because I remember like doing Christmas and trying to go to work all day and come home and be up like for, till two in the morning, trying to shove stuff in bags and get it out and get, here, get my, take this to the post office. I was like, there's no way to scale this without um, a full warehouse and employees until I discovered FBA. And I was like, all right, that's my first employee. Um, and really that business, um, when I had 15 shoppers, by the time I had that going on, I had um, a full-time employee and a remote, a couple of VAs just to manage some of the things. And mostly I look at, I probably am looking at the most strategic thing. I look, I keep the stuff that I think is really important and I don't let go of that as much. But if it has the word, starts with the word T, the letter T, and ends in S as in tedious, I get rid of that stuff fast. Because I am really bad at doing it. And it doesn't get done. So the bookkeeping got went as soon as I could justify getting rid of that. That was out of there. Um, a lot of the admin stuff in Amazon, when things get stranded or suppressed, and or they want the qualities done. Um, I even my listing on eBay is done by my VA. Um, under my guidelines and rules, but yeah. There you go. And uh, wow. I've had an assistant for pff, 10 years now because I knew, I, I kind of foresaw that I'd be out there busy, you know, running around the country, <laughs> teaching classes, doing things like that, hosting shows. And so I always want to keep the eBay business rolling. I'll make time to source, but I don't want to make time to do any other part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Someone the else can ship. Shopping is fun. I like sourcing. Hey, I'll, Barbara, I'll go shop with you any day. I, I, <laughs> If you were shopping every lunch break, that is what <laughs> I, I was. I was filling the car car up, and I buy little things. I don't even buy big stuff because it's too heavy. My She's business partner bought strollers. Yeah, I just wiped the shelves clean. 
All right, so if people want to find out more about Co-Merchant, I've got the website up on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also you have a Facebook group. Now, what's the Facebook group for? People who are already part of Co-Merchant or people who are thinking about it? Uh, it's both. So we routinely list, um, we routinely post um, in interesting things about um, that market, you know, either Walmart or Jet or even stuff in Amazon that applies in eBay. Um, I'm really going to look at that. I'm really interested in that release. I'm going to eBay open. So I'm very excited uh, to learn more about that um, release because that's, that's really important to have to try to get some of the noise down. Um, so, yeah, so if you um, are a co-merchant uh, customer, you're obviously in there and keeping on track of, we, we'll do some um, uh, announcements, put our new ads out. You, I can see the ad is there under, uh, just right there underneath the first post. Um, yep, so that's it. Any questions, that kind of thing. And we have cool. a Facebook page and group. Beautiful. All right. Uh, I want to, uh, when we hang up here or end the show, I'm going to talk about email for, for a sec. So don't, don't run away just yet. So first off, let me, uh, let me thank everyone who participated in the t-shirt contest. Woo that was a ton of fun. We'll do more stuff like that. I used to do a lot of them. Then I got busy and then I found those four wacky shirts. So I'm like, Oh, we'll do more fun stuff like that. Uh, Michelle, thank you for co-hosting for the first time. Even though we had crazy difficulties, we worked through it. And hopefully we'll figure it out before the next time you co-host. So we have to start late and you know run through. But no biggie, it worked. Barbara, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you are a force. Uh, you you figured it out, and it's so cool that you know we all have our things, and you figured out your things. And you're like, I don't want to do tedious crap, so uh, let me keep <laughs> it out, keep fine tuning. And I love that, and I love talking about different avenues to sell on. That is so mm -hmm. very cool. Thank you for everyone who tuned in live. Thank you, everyone who watches after the fact. Thank you, Stephanie, for doing questions tonight. And uh, don't forget to tune in Saturday to see how Kim, Stephanie, and Debbie outsourced me. Uh, they crushed me. <laughs> My bag contains two items that day. So oh, wow. uh, with that, I'm going to say go Cavs. Woo -woo! Bring it home. And uh, we'll see you guys on Saturday for the next Thrift Hall. So have a good night, everybody. And we'll see you on Saturday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.